Hey folks, guess who? That's right, crusty old Marine. I really am crusty. <clears throat> Got these old crusty spots. I've had them for years. Um, and finally, at the insistence of the colonel, I went to a dermatologist and had them take a look. And they are what they call seboric keratosis. It's nothing bad. It's uh, they just take and freeze them off. They're not cancer. It's not leprosy, although it kind of looks like leprosy. And uh, I'm ugly enough without these things making me any uglier, so <clears throat> we got them took care of. Anyway, today we're going to do a review of the Creedmoor range cart. This one's mine. I've shot it in over a dozen matches. I've had plenty of uses out of it to know what you know my perceived pros and cons are of it and where it really shines and where it really falls short. And we're going to compare it to this Peterson range cart. Uh, this one belongs to a buddy of mine out at the range, and the Peterson cart is... It's modeled off the Schneller cart, and he put perceived uh, improvements on it. I think there probably are improvements over the Schneller, but you know, that all comes down to your preferences. So anyway, let's get to it. So this is the Creedmoor range cart. As of October 2022, it retails for $499.95. It includes the cart, the seat storage bag, the rifle rack, the spotting scope, Stand, the rifle case, the tray, and a nice hard drain, drain bag, drain cover. Now, on this rifle case, I'm not thrilled with it. Um, they list that as a feature, that it includes that. And, oh, by the way, this cart is set up the way that uh, Creedmoor says you should set it up, and that is with this spotting scope stand up, in the, up here in the front and the tray back here, and I find that to be like a 180 degrees out of sync for what works for me. Anyway, let's talk about this uh, rifle case for a moment. I ordered the 52 inch case. That's the longest one that they have. And I ordered that thinking and hoping that I could get my Ruger precision rifle with the Trijicon 10 mile in it because it's a pretty long rifle got a 26 inch barrel but it will go in this case but with that large optic it will not zip up and it will barely zip with my service rifle uh, let me show you well this is not the one I really meant to get out it's uh it's the one I shot last because I shot a uh, modified or a Acor CMP iron sights only so <laughs> but it's still got the same stock on it but it doesn't have an optic um, so it's not going to be a good representation of how that fits with the optic. But you can see, even without the optic, there's not a lot of room right there at the high point of it. So that optic is sticking up just a little bit more. It's going to be super tight. You can see right here how tight it is with just the uh, A2 carry handle uh, combo rear sight. Uh, it is really tight once you put the, the rifle with the optic on it. So another reason I don't use it. Just don't love uh, how the rifle case works on it. Works okay with this. Uh, it's really too long and I don't like it on the front. The two times that I've shot a match and used a rifle case, I've used this savior bag that I have. Uh, it's rectangular. I can put two rifles in it. I don't put two rifles in it on the uh, cart but it sits right up on the seat, or I can set it on the back, either one. Uh, it holds my rifle really well. I've got some pockets I can access some gear, uh, put my glove in, things like that, uh, a Sharpie. And just, to me, it's a better bag than this. I don't, I don't even use this with a rifle case. I use the rifle rack. So let's, uh, I'm gonna turn this around and set it up the way that I like it set up. And we'll talk about what uh, Creedmoor says are some features. So I turned this around a little bit and I set it up the way I use it and the way I think uh, most shooters uh, that shoot service rifle anyway uh, set it up. What I did, I put the tray over here on this side because that's where I keep my data book and I keep rounds when I'm shooting the offhand up here and I moved the scope stand to where it's on the back. Um, with the tray on this side, if, I, if you turn it around, you can't put the spotting scope on this side. There's not enough clearance between the tray and the handle. Uh, you can move the tray over to 
this side and I can have it on the back or the front and if I put it on the front on that side then I can have the spotting scope stand on the front but it just works for me um, it's almost as close it's probably it's probably three and a half inches uh, closer to the shooter because I'm standing on that side if you leave it set up on your cart but I like it this way because I typically pull my cart and I can also tilt it up and I can pull or push it with the spotting scope stand and that that works pretty good too especially on some hilly terrain the reason I like this setup is and I, this is the way most shooters in the uh, service rifle this one are in the offhand you got your tray right here um, you can have your spotting scope stand you can leave it set up on the cart or you can move it and set it on the ground I usually set mine on the ground uh, I'm gonna have to take it off and put it on the ground anyway for the 300 and 600 but you can set it up here and look through it you have to lean a little bit uh, which if, if it was on this side yes I wouldn't have to lean as far but you still have to lean if you don't want to break your foot position in between shots but we set it up this way so we can have our data book here um, an ammo box right here and so we get set up take our shot rest the rifle you don't want to sit there and hold that rifle the whole time so set up with everything this way including the seat just works best to me uh, for service rifle in the offhand some people may set it up the other way but this is the way I was kind of taught and brought up using it and it works great I don't see any reason to change it. I've got the rifle and the rifle rack um, when I ordered mine a couple of uh, there were a couple of um, quality issues I guess uh, I'm gonna say they did not include the rifle rack and they shorted me one screw to put this whole cart together and they use Allen head screws on this thing they're a quarter 20 by three quarter and I wanted to get the thing together because I had to go to Jordan and shoot a match so I went to uh, Lowe's and got these uh, quarter 20 Phillips head they they work just as good I'm trying to see yeah there's uh, there's one of their Allen head it it is flat whereas this Phillips head it's got a little round rounded head to it but it still sets down flush it's so much easier to me to use a Phillips than an Allen head why they use the Allen head to begin with I don't know but like I was saying I went to Lowe's and uh, got a screw to get this thing together and did not have the rifle rack I called them told them hey the included rifle rack didn't show up and one thing I'll have to say about Creedmoor they have impeccable customer service they uh, they didn't question it and said we'll get one right out to you but it wasn't in time for that Georgia match so that was one of the matches I used the rifle case that uh, I was not thrilled with but anyway let's cover some things that they call features so I'm covering some of the features the rifle rack I think the rifle rack is it's really nice it's uh these parts are made out of nylon they won't scratch your rifle and they're good and sturdy and it's got this surgical tubing to hold your rifle so <clears throat> you can pull it over i could put it in that top slot right there if i wanted to i usually pull it over put a little tension on it pull it up like that top one pull over kind of the same thing um, and this stuff's not anything high tech it's going to wear out and break you know especially from uv damage and you can get this stuff anywhere so uh it's a it, it, that is a really good design uh the back part of it right here <coughs> uses this nylon block and it's got lock washers uh doesn't come apart uh good design um features straps for your shooting mat they're straps what do you want me to say they work I normally don't put my shooting mat there. I just fold it up, put it on the seat, and strap uh, and put my jacket on top of that, and then strap that down to one of these because, you know, it's on and off so much. I don't want to roll the damn mat back up and uh, have to unroll it, all that crap. Stool bag slash seat. Uh, it's got a lot of storage underneath here. I usually keep it loaded up with a lot of crap. It's got a little pocket right here, and it's got pockets on the front and back for uh, magazines. 
Last time I used it, I shot a thousand yard match with my 6.5, so it's got my 6.5 mag still in it. Um, so there's two manuals to this cart. This is the one that they include with the cart, and it's sort of garbage, uh, mostly on the part where it talks about the wheel assembly, and I'll show you a little bit more on that later. Um, it's decent. The pictures in it are not very high resolution, so it doesn't show you a whole lot. And then I found out when I thought I was missing a star knob to the spotting scope stand that they have another manual for this thing. It's online. She referred me to that because we needed the part number for the uh, star knob. And it is way better than this manual. Why they don't include it, I have no idea but uh, I'll include a link to it below. It actually has decent instructions on how to put the wheel assembly together. So you can see in the direction in this manual, it says step six, using a small crescent wrench, attach the threaded end of the wheel bars, then tighten. Step seven, attach wheels to lower handle using the large star knobs and set this assembly aside. It's like they're leaving out a big step there because in the parts, you got the two star knobs. I'll show you those in a minute. They send you four flat washers, half inch flat washers like these, two nuts, and two nylock nuts. Now, in the PDF manual, it gives you a whole lot better instructions on how to do this. And the only other step anywhere in this assembly where it talks about the wheel, it says using the small pins, attach the handle and wheel assembly to the scissor frame. Using the last remaining short pin, attach the wheel brace to the scissor frame. There is nothing else in there that tells you how to assemble that wheel assembly. Now this wheel is assembled and how the manual that comes with it tells you to assemble it. You've got the, the bolt, which is also the axle. Uh, put a washer on the outside of that, through the wheel. Another washer on the inside right here. And then you thread the wheel bar onto there and then you use they don't say that but that's the intent the pdf manual tells you that you put that nut the non-nylock nut on right there and then your star knob but you can see what that does to the alignment it pushes that bar out away from the frame i wouldn't say it's out of alignment but it's uh why not have it right up against the frame if you don't use some kind of spacer right here <coughs> and here the threads on the bolt don't start far enough out or go far enough toward the head and they all this stuff will bottom out and the uh, star knob won't lock up or won't tighten up so on this side you can see I've used the bolt and a washer and then in here a washer and an extra washer out here haven't used the nut anywhere just the star knob and I like the way that is aligned much better it's right up against the frame on both ends and not riding way out on that pin like it did in the other side like it did over here so put it together however you want to uh, if you put it together like this you're gonna have to go get yourself a couple extra washers but I think it's a better way of putting it together another feature they talk about is for the spotting scope so right underneath here you see that little nub is where you set your spotting scope stand down on so it won't slide around. There's quite a big hole under there. And uh, honestly, I think that nub ought to be just a little bit higher. It's uh, It works, but uh, a little bit higher would be just a little bit more secure. On the handle, this thing has two sets of holes. I've got it in the lower set right now, so uh, you can see how high my handles are if you use the upper set of holes which it's these four star knobs right there then it comes up what is that about five inches higher and it is really high and when you go tip it over to pull it instead of pushing it it puts quite an angle on that and if you're pulling it by your spotting scope stand it's uh, it's quite a strain on it one thing they don't tell you in this manual are all these bars right here 
you can see that one I need to take it apart and, and redo part of it that bar down there and this bar down at the bottom those things first match a cart was coming apart and I had those in as tight as they would go in the PDF manual it tells you to put blue Loctite or similar product on these and I'm going to tell you that still doesn't stop these things from coming apart um, I'm afraid to use red Loctite because this gets out of adjustment a little bit sometimes and uh, you know all you have to do is loosen the side loosen it up a little bit you can rotate this and get that back into alignment but I need to take it apart and put some on that and tighten it up uh, cart requires it's kind of like your rifle you need to clean your rifle and you need to inspect your rifle before every match every time you go shoot and your cart you better inspect it and do a little maintenance on it or it's going to give you trouble at a match let's talk about how this thing the handle folds up to make this thing a little more transportable uh, it's got four star knobs right here and you can also like i said earlier you can, there's two sets of holes you can put those in you can see one of them right up here it would be that hole and that hole if you wanted the handle a lot higher but to break it down you just twist these out and i found that these threads were not uh not super good i don't know if they're not cut well if they're a little bit out of alignment but i had to use some white lithium grease on these things and run them in several times in and out to sort of loosen the threads up <clears throat> but you pull that out and then this whole handle folds down see it hits on the stool there you have to lift the uh, wheel bar so the stool will fold up pick that up just a little bit and folds down a little further if you take the wheels off you can fold it down to the back and uh, get it a little more flush if you fold it down to the back it hits on these pins so you have to pull these pins apart take the wheels apart and fold that up but it'll, it'll get pretty flat especially if you take the wheels off and you could get it in your smart car without having to put it up on top but like i said who's driving a smart car to uh, competitions okay another feature they feature they talk about on this is solid aluminum construction this is all solid aluminum bar stock it's even though it's aluminum it's pretty heavy this thing really is sturdy um, they're lesser model of the range card is made out of tubular aluminum uh, I would worry about it being being one of the big boys that it might fold up with me I've had several stools do that um, but this thing is not light it's got a little bar right back here it hooks over the rear axle you can fold it down and load it up in your truck take the wheels off take these and pull the handle off make it shorter if you want and uh, it'll break down if you drive a, eh, I don't know if it'd go into a smart car, but if you're driving a smart car, you're probably not shooting a lot of competition rifle unless your uh, uh, cart's up on top of your car. One of the features is the adjustable tray. I, there's not much adjustment to it. You can put it on this side or that side. It will not rotate. Uh, in fact, these, well, those, there again, I've talked about maintenance. Those need to be tightened up a little bit. I think a better design would be that this thing, that you could tilt it a little bit one way or the other. Um, I do find that I take it off a lot in a match, like when I'm scoring, I turn over and I put a scorecard in there and I'm in the back scoring for somebody else and then just slap it back on. It's got these little holes on it. I drilled a couple of extra and I use some little tiny bungee straps to hold my data book on there, uh, keep the pages from blowing and uh, turning on me. And with the and with the tray set up back here, uh, makes the seat okay. Yeah, you really can't lean back on it. But like I said, once I leave the 200 yard line, the tray comes off anyway. I'm not using it, so. Um, I want to show you something here and it'll segue well into the Peterson cart. Let's just take that tray off a minute. So, like I said, I'm not a little guy. 
uh, you can see when I sit on this, the bars hit right under the back of my legs. It would be nice if this thing was wider. And it's not terribly uncomfortable. It's not uncomfortable. Uh, it's not comfortable to sit in for an hour, two hours at a time. But uh, you don't do all that much sitting on the range anyway. But you can see <coughs> how that is not really taut. It's not nice and tight. It's not stretched. Uh, that, that affects the comfort a little bit, but, uh, but let me show you how they've done it on the Peterson cart, and they use this exact same range bag. So this Peterson range cart, you can see that it's got the exact same bag as the Creedmoor, but you can see how tall that is. This thing is deeper from front to back, and it's wider, so, and plus the rounded, uh, this is not, uh, I don't think this is aluminum. I think it's stainless steel. I'm not sure what gauge it is. It's not excessively heavy or anything like that, but if you sit on that, that is a whole lot more comfortable than the uh, Creedmoor. You can see I don't have anything digging into the back of my legs. This thing being uh, tighter is uh, a lot more comfortable. And I know in 2019, this, and that's the last time they had a price on this, and that's how long my buddies had it, it retailed for uh, 400 and what was it? Uh, $475. Now, it did not include this bag. So you have to buy that bag separate from uh, Creedmoor. And those bags are $59.95. So that brings the price of that up to $434.95. Um, is it worth it? I don't know. It uses the exact same wheels as the Creedmoor. He's got them locked in with uh, cotter pins and a true axle that goes all the way through. So <clears throat> the cotter pins probably a little bit more trouble to get in and out than the star knob uh, because you have to have some pliers. But it's it's really quality built. It's set up well. Um, this part of it, you can these little levers you just unscrew and you can pull this whole handle out for transport. You can fold that portion of it up. Now, the basket on here, uh, that's extra. My buddy put that on there. That does not come with it. And that may be a little bit of a problem. I'll show you here in a minute uh, why I think that may be. Their tray on the Peterson, it's just a pop-up, it's flat. It's got little hinges, you can lock it down. It's got a it's got these same nylon blocks on both sides. Uh, well, no, it is, well on the top it does. You can use this as a rifle rack. Um, it's got that portion that swivels for a rifle rack. I'll, I'll stick my rifle in there in a second. And then over here, uh, actually let me film that for you. Over here, it's set up for the spotting scope stand. And you can see the little bottom portion that holds your spotting scope here. It is much longer. now. You've got to get that into the pole. It uh, it is a little harder to fit up, but man, once the spotting scope gets in there, you're not afraid at all that things going to fall out. So the rifle goes into the rifle rack really well. You can use it uh, if your rifle was really long and you're out here on the fore end of it. Uh, it's got a big cut out on that side or the small cut out there. Now it does not include any kind of strapping, but you can take some small bungee straps, hook them up on the cart, strap your rifle in however you like it. The uh, spotting scope stand works like the other one. <clears throat> the problem with the spotting scope stand on this, a problem with the spotting scope stand on this, you have to work a little bit to get it to go in the hole. Uh, isn't that always the case? You gotta work a little bit to get it to go in the hole. But yeah, it's uh, and once you get it, it's in there good and tight. Uh, this is really aggravating. It's got nylocks on there, so you could you could tighten that up a little bit. Oh, come on, gotta get it in the hole. There we go. Ooh, feels good when it goes in the hole. Anyway, so a problem you see with this one is 
me check the camera angle. The problem you see with this one is it's really got the thing leaned back. So your angle to use it, if you're right here in your spot set up to shoot, you're gonna have to lean way over here, but it's a nice sturdy tray. You can lean on the tray, it's not gonna collapse with you as long as you block the hinges out. And uh, but like I said, I like it. I just set it on the ground. Um, you know, the whole thing's gonna have to be pulled around. <clears throat> Again, there's nothing to hold it on there. You're gonna have to put some bungee straps on it. And let me show you real quick what I was talking about a problem with this one so I'm going to try to stay in the camera frame here actually let me zoom it out a little bit that's all it'll go and right, I can go over to there okay I think this is gonna do it <laughs> now everybody pulls their some people pull their cart some people push their cart now this one I'm going to tell you it's going to collapse on me. I'm not going to be able to pull it too far, but watch what I mean. Yep, see it already collapsed. Now that's it. Collapsed again. I think that's twofold. I don't think it's really a problem with a cart. I think number one is this basket that my buddy added on the back. While it's, it's really helpful, um, it seriously changes the CG on this cart. When you load it up, you don't have that problem at all. Or if you turn it around and push it, the thing will push all day long. Not for that. Works fine. Works like it's supposed to. So just for just for shins and grits, let's uh, put some stuff in it and see if that fixes that little CG problem. I'm going to guarantee that it does. So we've got a rifle in it. Uh, yeah. Let's throw the spotting scope back on it. See if I can find the hole a little better this time. You know, once you find out where that hole is and how they like it, it's, uh, it's easier to get into that hole again. Well, maybe not. There we go. See how easy I got in the hole that time? So I've got that on there. Let me throw uh, something in the bag. So I'm going to throw this uh, tray in the bag. No, I'm not. It's not going to fit. I can set the tray down right there. And grab a half a box of bullets out of there. Throw it in this one. Now, I'm going to bet it doesn't fold up on me this time. So, here we go. And the rifle fell off. That's why you gotta strap it in. But yeah, you get some weight in here, it doesn't, uh, doesn't fold up on you at all. So. so, the thoughts on the Peterson, it's a great cart, but when you add the cost of the stool bag comes to $35 more than the uh, Creedmoor is. Um, and Peterson apparently does not keep these in stock. You have to order them. Uh, he just builds a few at a time. And I was shooting with a, uh, a guy I know real well that shoots a lot. We were talking about carts the other day at a match. And uh, these are built locally, these P Peterson. They're built, uh, I don't know, 20 miles from where I live. And I guess the guys are not putting a lot of, they, they have a machine shop. I think it's two brothers. And I don't guess they put a lot of emphasis into the carts. You know, there's not a huge market for these things. Um, you know, you have the, the Schneller, which they're out of business. Well, they're not out of business, but they don't build range carts anymore. They build uh, like food carts and stuff for the aviation industry. So very tiny uh, niche market for this. Uh, they probably built them. I guess somebody in the company that uh, used to shoot competitively and they designed and built a cart. Um, you have the Creedmoor cart and you have this Peterson if you can get it. Uh, like I said, I think it's run by two brothers. They have a machine shop. I'm sure they have a whole lot of other work that they do. Uh, the buddy I was shooting with the other day, he told me that the AMU, the Army Marksmanship Unit, gave him a contract for, I don't know, it was 50, 100, 200 of these things. That was three years ago. They still don't have their carts. So good luck getting one. Uh, like I said, they're good. 
I don't think that they're better than this cart. Um, my, my thoughts on the Creedmoor, it, it's a great cart too. Uh, it has some design features or flaws that I'd change if it was my company. Um, my dig, biggest disappointment with the Creedmoor was, you know, the quality control. You ship the thing to me and it's missing a screw and it doesn't come with the rifle rack. I mean, you know, geez, that, may, that makes you think right off the bat, you you got to wonder about quality. But like I said, Creedmoor has always given me excellent customer service. And, you know, they're one of our, our sponsors of the Marine Corps League shooting team. Um, I don't get stuff for free, but, you know, they sponsor us. We, we do get a deal. Uh, I will talk well about their stuff, but I'm going to be honest about it. Uh, it's a good cart, but it's, it's got some design issues. Um, the instructions. You, you saw that crappy set of instructions they sent. Why don't you just send that PDF, print that PDF and send it out to people? It's a much better manual. Uh, or people get the uh, links to it. I'm going to include the link to that manual uh, below the video. So if you want to, if you happen to buy one of these Creedmoor carts and you want a better instruction manual about how to put it together, uh, you'll have a link to it. Um, let's see. Um, we talked about uh, the Peterson and the Creedmoor Schneller are really the only kind of carts of this type. And you see this a lot in rifle competitions, but you know, you go to a three gun match or some PRS stuff, you see, uh, I think it's rugged gear. They build some really nice carts. Uh, they're not cheap, but they're not really designed for what we do. One thing these are great at is having that rest for your rifle in the offhand. Um, you know, no other discipline does that, so I can see where that uh, doesn't come in great. The rugged gear, I've never tried one. I don't know how they are for seating, but I know they got a lot of room. Um, you know, it's kind of crazy how we as shooters, you know, we, we all have our personal likes and uh, we'll, we'll pay through the nose or out the ass for, uh, you know, like some precision grade match barrel and reloading equipment, uh, you know. But then we we're cheap asses when it comes to something like this. You know, you go to the range, <laughs> and you see all, all kinds of things. You'll see, you'll see a, you'll see Creedmoors, you'll see these Petersons, you'll see a lot of Schnellers, but you'll also see a lot of home built crap. You know, ghetto looking stuff. You know, somebody put two wheels on a, on their kid's wagon and, uh, you know, changed the handle around and they're pulling around or. You know, they're using a, uh, a torch cart, you know, like I said, ghetto looking stuff. But, you know, hey, you spend your money where you want to, and if it works for you, more power to you. Um, so with that, Krusty Old Marine's going to sign off. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. And uh, remember, kids, X's win matches and keep the greasy side down. Y'all have a good one.